Oh, morning, world. <laughs> Just have a butcher's up my old stars. They might forecast the end of the world. Yeah, that'd save me cleaning the windows, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, dear, look at this. Your love life is ready for an unexpected turn. Unexpected turn, love life. Here, good man, I'm going to score that stripper down a social club. Oh, well, she's a totally unexpected turn. Free tassels. <laughs> <laughs> While you're watching a tassel, she comes up and drinks your beer. You like that? It's great. <laughs> I've been busy just thinking about it. Oh, hello. Look at that. Oh, look at that. See a pin? Pick it up. Oh, that's a lucky sign, that is. Could be a sign that Angela Ripon was standing here last night and her knickers fell down. <laughs> Yeah, my old aunt Min believed in all them old superstitions, you know. She'd never walk under a ladder. No, she used to kick the bottom away and walk over it. <laughs> yeah, kids used to follow her around all day just to see a flying window cleaner. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, Friday the 13th was aunt Min's real hang up. Yeah, I remember when I was a kid, she used to say, When Friday the 13th comes to pass, <laughs> sit on your bed. <laughs> With a bottle and glass. <laughs> oh, bad luck could befall you out there on the street. A bus might run over one of your plates of meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a well, great poet, wasn't she, my Aunt Min? Now, me, I'm not superstitious. Touch wood. <laughs> well, I mean, I weren't superstitious until one Friday the 13th. I was sitting in bed when... ruined a fantastic dream you had. Oh, of course. Didn't know that Bo Derek could run so fast. <laughs> I ain't opened my eyes yet and I'm knackered. Oh. 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 I wish that Susan George wouldn't leave her boots on her. <laughs> And you joke, Jimbo, when you're crippled for life. Just my luck if war broke out. I couldn't run away, I'd have to surrender. <laughs> oh, look at what's that, really? That paper boy's taking the he's having a right go at me then. <laughs> what's this? The rice paddy gazette? I was oh, it marvellous. I bet they're having a right laugh down a Chinese takeaway with my paper. Bet they're going blind looking at me page three girl. Well, so as I'm right, I might get bigger portions. <laughs> well, morning world, that's all it. Speak to me, transit. Speak and to me. That was the latest single from Bucks Fitz. And now it's nearly 10 o'clock on Friday the 13th. Ooh. <laughs> Friday the 13th, oh, I better not with that. Go back to bed, son. Give it a miss. <clears throat> oh. Friday the 13th, do your damnedest, boy. <laughs> Friday? Oh, can't be. <laughs> Friday the 13th. <laughs> No, me signing on money. Oh, God, me dull money. <laughs> oh, cruel <wrong> balls. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Where is it? Byros one for the unemployed, for the use of. Oh, come on, how you got. You ain't been at it again, are you? How are you gonna function as a state-employed Wally if you keep knocking out the equipment? You're late, Mr. London. Fifteen minutes late. Oh, all right, all right. I went to a party last night, didn't I? I said to this black girl, I said, can I take you home afterwards? Whereabouts you from? She said, Africa. <laughs> you ever tried to get back from Africa on a Friday? It's murder. Oh, all right. I was lying about the girl anyway. She come from Balham. Still, you've got to get back here, haven't you? So you don't mind a bit of travelling then, Mr. London? That's good. Because the manager's got something mapped out for you. Mr. London is here, sir. Engine room? All right, prepare to dive. <laughs> walk this way, Mr. London. If I could walk that way. <laughs> You'll never learn, will you? Naughty boy, don't mess it. <laughs> Hello, Governor. Good afternoon, Mr. London. Oh, uh, your boy out there says that you're going to offer me a large lump sum, and I've decided to accept it, all right? Oh. Ernest? Hello. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to sit in on this one. God knows we get little enough enjoyment these days. We might as well share what we do get. Thank you, sir. You're very kind. <laughs> 
Look, would you two like to be alone? Uh, only I'll come back later. I'm not doing anything. That's exactly what Mr. Opton and myself are worried about, Mr. London. You not doing anything. Correct, Ernest? So, we are going to send you on a little training scheme. Sadly, not the employment you picked out on Form 21B, on which you said you would like to be... A window uh, dresser in a betting shop. <laughs> I've had my heart set on it, but, yeah. Uh... Well, this one does look a bit dangerous. So perhaps its purpose is to thin some of you lot out a bit. Clear the decks, so to speak. Dangerous? Oh, no, no. I can't stand heights. It, it's, it's not... No. Uh. Sewage maintenance. <laughs> Twelve weeks in the government training centre, our broth. You start Monday. Sewer maintenance? You mad? Here, what's an our broth? It's a little place in Scotland, isn't it, Ernie? <laughs> it's a wind up, isn't it? Hey, what is it? Like a special government employee's April Fool Day, uh, St. Wally's Day or something. <laughs> when you sort of get together and frighten the sh. <laughs> it's, not for, it's not for real, is it? It's a joke, isn't it? <laughs> nah, it's not for real, is it? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Would you like to buy a raffle ticket for this exquisite Victorian marble statue, an ideal centrepiece for the large drawing room? Cool, blimey, Tosh. You ain't still raffling tickets for the Albert Memorial, are you? <laughs> you must be desperate. Just filling in till a case of quality gear falls off the back of a lorry. Tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> well, I hope it's better stuff than that. Oh, that tease made you got me. If it's anything like them, I tell you, you might as well get the lorry driver to stop and reverse over them. <laughs> What's wrong with it? It brews up, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Brews up, then blows up, then froze up all over the carpet. <laughs> he took my head off. All right, all right. So you had some substandard gear. It happens. So I'll let you have one of the next items for nothing, OK? Oh, why are they? Electric razors. <laughs> Made in Indonesia by redundant pygmies. <laughs> Each one a potential death trap, but you're welcome. Here, come on, let's get down a snooker roll. No, Give I you can't... two black start for a fiver. No, I can't play snooker. Yeah, I know, that's why I'm giving you two black start for a fiver. <laughs> I mean, I can't play snooker now. I'm otherwise employed, don't I? I'm looking for a job. What? In here? No, not in here, you burke. In the linen draper, aren't I? If I don't get a job, the dole off is going to send me on a course to Scotland. Scotland? What are they going to teach you there? Haggis trapping. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, mate, if you think it's funny me going to Scotland, I ain't going to tell you about the course, because you wet yourself. <laughs> Make me laugh, you know, look. Why are all the jobs in here for managers? I mean, don't they have workers anymore? No. They have robots now, don't they, Jimbo? Mm. The managers switch them on in the morning, quick squirt a free one in the ear hole, and Bob's your uncle. Mm. Well, I've seen Star Wars three times. I've got to be in with a chance, haven't I? Eh? <laughs> oh, here's one might suit me. Look, travelling salesman, no previous experience necessary. Oh, I can't do that. I ain't got a driving licence. Only two endorsements, a tenner. <laughs> I'll put the baby back when you get the readies. Yeah, who's this? Joseph Obolonsky. <laughs> Polish, isn't it? Yeah, well, I nicked it off a sausage roll last week. He didn't need it. I nicked his jam jar the week before. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to say if old Bill stopped me, eh? And he says, excuse me, Mr. Obolonsky. Mr. I mean, he can't read it. I can't pronounce it. What do I say? Just call me Joseph Nostrovia. <laughs> well, listen, if you don't want to go to Scotland, mate, you've got to take a few chances, haven't you? Take chances? I won't be going to Scotland without me pocket, will I? I'll be going to Nick for six months. Probably get packed off to Poland, wouldn't I? <laughs> what am I going to do? I've oh, come, Tosh. Look. Oh, we can't let them wallies down the Labour defeat us, can we? I mean, with my brains and your connections, they ain't got a chance, have they? Yeah, hang about. Get it right, me old son. They ain't defeating me. They're after you. If I put my all on with that lot, I might inherit untold grief, which I can well do without far very much. Oh, thanks a bunch. Oh, well, that's it then, isn't it? Afraid so, me old China. But promise me you'll look after yourself and bring me back a stick of rock. Oh, uh, by the way, what was I going to teach you up there anyway? Well, that course. No, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Oh, please yourself. All right, I'll tell you. <laughs> Something to do with this Haggis airline they got. What, that uh, Caledonian Airways? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they've got this sort of hostel up there for the air stewardesses. The girls, like, when they're not aviating, they want me to sort of be a warden, you know, take them down the pub, give them a few drinks and that, and tuck them in bed of a night. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's all them sort of things. You're joking. All right, I'm joking. I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Sounds too good to be true. Hold on. If it's like you say, why aren't you on your bike steaming northwards? Well... Well, one, if I leave me house for three months, a squatter will take it over completely, will not he? Two, I'm forming a meaningful relationship with Lois Tight. And three and four, well, none of your business. <laughs> oh, great. Get the Labour to take your name off and put me in the frame. You sure you like it? 
I'd love it, wouldn't I? Oh, I don't know, three months up there makes a long time. It gets very tight as in the mould up there. Listen, I did three months in the scrubs last year. Blimey, cold? I had to share a cell with two brass monkeys and, and a, a welding, welding iron. iron. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're forgetting something anyway. What? Well, you said yourself it's me there after, innit? I mean, I ain't gonna give you the job while I'm still under starters all as are they? No sweat, I'll soon sort that out. Yeah, I thought you would. What about if we get you a dummy medical certificate? No, he'd never, he'd never give me one, my quack old Perkins the poisoner. God, he hates me. You know, if I told him I had a sprained ankle, he'd put me down for the London Marathon. <laughs> yeah, hang about. There's this Indian bird I know over Wandsworth. Sunita, she works for her old uncle. He's a doctor, just got over here. Right old rascal he is. He signed anything for a few quid. I'm skint, and I? Don't worry, my son. I'll loan you a score and I'll buy you a pint. And it's straight off the Dr. Tanduri end. I'll take the higher road and you take the low road and I'll be in Haggis Land before you. <laughs> you sing up, Tosh. You ain't going nowhere, my son. <laughs> Jimbo, you've crept it, boy. <laughs> One and all. Now, purely as a recreational facility and a little pastime enjoyed by punters one and all throughout the Western world, I'd like to introduce you to Find the Lady. There she is. What can't speak can't lie. If you've got no socks, you can't pull them up. If you've got no money, you can't spend it. You're walking here on your stocking feet, you'll drive away in your motor cars. You, sir, would you care for a little wager? Gosh, I came here as a patient, not a backup team for a free card trick. Leave <laughs> it out, you bloke. This is a little gold mine. Off we go again then, find the lady. There she is, where she gets to, nobody knows. Cello, up, up, key turn. Up, up, key turn. No, no, Jim London, 17 railway <laughs> Oh, oh, that's next, please. Might as well be me, eh? What are they doing? Oh, uh, oh well, my friend Tosh is doing like a harmless old parlour game that in England we produce a deal with the old three card and lady for this and deep drawing the shuffle load and on the cars and all foot and forget it and the mum loads and for this and all the floppy dangles on the buzzy most. <laughs> Will you so far? Will you go in, please? speaks no English, so I will interpret for you. Oh, oh. Well, you see, it's like this. I've got a bit of trouble with very... Yes, oh. Bilkul buddhu hai. Shakal dekho. Lata hai jayse moon par se bhaas kusuri ho. My uncle says, have you been trampled by a water buffalo? <laughs> Not recently, no. It was his specialist subject back in his village. Oh. He'll do well with that one round here then, won't he? Eh, isse pili dawai ki ek bottle de do. Iske daak per daak nahi parega. Wo to pehle hi itne pile hain. Doctor wants you to have this. Well, I don't want any medicine, what is it? Look, it says, a spoonful a day keeps buffaloes away. <laughs> Two pounds fifty. Oh. Do me a favour. Please. We are very poor. Mm, all right. Better safe than sorry, I suppose. You have so many wise sayings in the Western world. How can I learn them all? Well, you could come out with me for a curry one night. <laughs> You'd be surprised what you pick up. <laughs> if it is the will of Krishna. Oh, well. Business before pleasure, I suppose. Even more wisdom. We are dust beneath your feet. Uh, ye yeah, Kashmiri. Oh. Jari booty ki theli de do. Isse iski sex life bohot prolong ho jayegi. Ya maam la khatam. My uncle the doctor says, will you accept this Kashmiri love potion? It will prolong your sex life. Yeah, tell him I'm still trying to get me sex life started, love. <laughs> I'll come back when it peaks. You must accept the potion or you will offend him. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Arai pound or uh, VAT included. <laughs> he says that will be two pounds fifty, including VAT. Oh, stand up. Listen, do you ever get the. Look, put it this way, love. We keep this up much longer. I'm going to be skint, and I? Full of Eastern promise. Oh, immune to water buffaloes, fair enough, but I'll still be wallying round the sewers in Scotland, won't I? Look, can't you just tell him what I came here for? Look, I'll be frank with you. Hello, 
prank. He speaks a few words of English. Yeah, so do I, if I get a few words in. Look, can you please tell him that I want a certificate to tell the Ministry of Labour I'm all right to sign on for me dull money, but I can't travel on long distances, see? Then they won't send me off to Scotland to be an underground bricklayer. You sort of Ministry of Labour ko dene kailie a certificate chate hai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tell them not to mention anything about lions or tigers. It tends to upset them a bit down the labour. It's a kya bimari hai. Doctor says, what are your symptoms? Yeah, tell him I used to be a West Ham supporter. <laughs> which in the Western world is a, is a case of mental instability. Mary Kyle say ye bilkul bonkers hai. Bolte hai ke wo agal supporter ta West Ham ka. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and if I have more than ten pints of lager, my knees give way. Yeah. <laughs> Cartilage trouble. Mere kal me jo chitti achate hai, isi dito. Bhot acha. That will be fifteen pounds, please. <laughs> fifteen pounds? Oh, I suppose so. But here, you tell old Tandoori there. I think he's taking a right liberty with me. Yeah. Ye keta hai ke aapka charges rip off hai. Ise batao ke ye to bahut khush kismat hai. Agar bhais ne is par attack kiya hota to kam se kam haath pair kho baithta. My uncle says it is fortunate you were not attacked by a water buffalo. That could cost you an arm and a leg. <laughs> they have such wisdom the old ones. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Here, yeah, don't forget to have a word to old Krishna about our curry tomorrow night, eh? I'll give you a bell on the old dog and bone. I will make offerings to the gods. Ooh. Oi, Sinita, your mates have just robbed me blind, they have. Serve you right, Tosh Carey, you greedy git. <laughs> Here, come on, I've got it, I've got it. Let's go down the dole office before it shuts. The geezer's just won my jacket. I ain't going without it, and I don't want any aggro from that, though. So give us your billiard chalk, quick, quick, quick. Uh, excuse me, sir, I happen to notice that jacket's a little bit on the large side for you. My name is Manny Cohen, head cutter at Montague Burton. Now, if you'd like to excuse me, we'll take off a little bit round there, a bit round there, nice bit of tough down the cuffs there, take it in there. There we are, the ring round there, it's nice and short, the cuff long and short, there we are, turn round on, oh, Look at the side with this sword hanging loose, we'll take a bit in I'll tell you what, give it to me, I'll take it down my shop, we'll have it ready for you by tomorrow. Now, this way, sir, your trousers will be waiting for you to be your try on. Afternoon, gentlemen, do pop in anytime you need a suit. Goodbye. <laughs> You didn't have to go so mad with a chalk, did you? What are you moaning about? Just go down to tailors, it'll alter it, it'll fit you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, what's this, Ernst? Sloping off before the whistle at the taxpayer's expense, eh? Well, you tell the governor I want to see him and I want grass on you, all right? What do you want to see him about? You tell him James London is here with a vital bit of information that will wipe that stupid green off his boat race. <laughs> here, Todd, here. How do, uh, how do you think old Bill are going to take it, you smites in off to Scotland? What's it got to do with the law? Well, ain't you on remand for them 500 bent videos? You know, the ones that turned out to be Mary Poppins? <laughs> I thought you weren't supposed to leave town. Oh, God, blimey, I've forgotten about that. Why didn't you remind me before? Before what? Before I lent you a score of onces and got involved with that den of tea leaves over Sunita's uncle. Yeah, Sasha, I thought you lent me that because I'm your mate. Yeah, yeah, of course I did, really. But I'm also 50 quid down on a day and nothing to show for it. Well, what about friendship? Now, you can't put a price on friendship. If I could, I'd be selling it. Not buying it, you bird. <laughs> You'll see him now. Here, yeah, Tosh, come here. This will cheer you up. Thanks very much. Oh, it's good. <laughs> ah, Mr. London. Just a moment. I haven't shown you this Telex, have I, Ernest? No, sir. Bad news, I hope. Telex number A, 2468B, Min of Labour, date today, subject, London, James. Call 76821 stroke 7, over subscribe, substitute 76821 stroke 9. Message ends, please confirm. Not a stroke nine, sir. Surely not a stroke nine. It's not fair. It's not fair. Bear up, Ernest, bear up. Some you win, some you lose. It's about your little study course. It seems that the powers that be in their infinite wisdom. Will you get straight back onto them powers at B, her overlaydenant, and tell them <laughs> that it is a no-go situation, because I, Jim Stroke, London ain't going 
Nowhere. Why not? Why not? Because I've got this sick note, haven't I, from the doctor saying I'm too ill to travel. That's why not. <laughs> there is someone up there after all, sir. Hallelujah, Ernest. Hallelujah. Hello. They're smiling. Something horrible is going to happen. <laughs> this does cover a 7682 stroke 9, doesn't it, sir? Indubitably. Look, do you mind, you two? I mean, me and my mate here don't speak fluent Wally. <laughs> Would you mind? May I, sir? It is my birthday. <laughs> it means that the sewer maintenance course, that what's so dear to our hearts, is not available and has been substituted in your case for 76821 stroke 9. The Ministry's latest crackpot scheme. Yeah, well, I ain't going nowhere, am I? If my doctor loses sight of me, he goes right off his curry. <laughs> the idea is you become one of the senior delinquents in charge of the junior delinquents in the youth hostel in Granada. Don't tell me you've turned a Granada bingo into a hostel. My mama goes spare. It's our second home, that is. <laughs> the Granada referred to is an island in the Caribbean. <laughs> what? Oh, well, I'll have some of that. When I all the eat, I'll be back and that, all them girls in grass skirts, oh, coconuts are falling on me head. However, <laughs> due to your unfortunate state of health, this patient is not able to travel long distances because of his weak knees and is, by his own admission, feeble-minded. <laughs> Signed, your doctor. Oh. oh, that was a joke, that was. Uh, everyone jokes about West Ham, don't they? I mean, knees are better. I'm off the lager now. Here, I'm as fit as a fiddle. Here, look at that. Look, look. And I'm brilliant. Go on, uh, Tosh, ask me a question while I'm running on the spot. Go. All right. Uh, when do I get me 20 quid back? Ask me an easier one. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, that's it for me, Friday the 13th. Oh, the next Friday the 13th, I'm going to get a crate of booze, lock myself in my bedroom, stay there all day. Might even invite Lois to join me. That is pushing your luck. Old Chinese saying. Him that pushes luck, pushes pram. <laughs> Not a point, then. <laughs> Too risky, eh? Yeah. Seriously, though, you don't really believe all this superstitious stuff about don't walk under a black cat on a Monday and all that, do you? All I know is, mate, it's Friday the 13th and nothing's gone right, is it? Rubbish. We're talking about rubbish. I mean, it ain't been a good day for you, is it? I mean, you've been £50 down. When was the last time you was turned over at the free card trick? That's got nothing to do with luck. I'm just out of practice. Hello, Mad Dog. Oh, hello, Mad Dog, mate. Come on, who that new barber down the high street was a bit lethal, but come on. Yeah, I ain't getting on with your new teas, mate. What a bargain. Here, want another one? Ow! Friday the 13th. Thank you.